to pay them a lot. And that was really good. The decoy, the team can all play. So we're going to move the hockey game over. That's what you expect in the playoffs. Is there any specific moment in this game that you think is going to be particularly important, whether it's, you know, a certain period of break or, you know, power play or anything? Like, what are you looking for tonight to try to swing this game? Well, I don't care if I'm right. Um, to where the game's going to go. The game's going to ask, ask questions. Are you ready for the power play? Are you ready for a face off? Are you ready for people who talk up? It's the only one we can control. So the game will ask questions just by the way it's played, and we got to be able to answer them. I don't know if you the National Forest Week. I don't know if you saw that, but you think that provides you know, any kind of motivation or boost or anything? Oh, I'm not going to agree. It wasn't my idea of the line, but uh, you know, people recognize what we did going into Clarkson, uh, a, a tough building against a good team that had high expectations, which was not an easy team. And um, I know our guys were over. <laughs> Very much good. Thanks. 15 minutes to go.
welcome to MNT Bank Arena on the campus of Quinnipiac University for tonight's ECLC quarterfinal matchup between the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute Engineers and the Quinnipiac University Bobcats. Both teams have just taken to the ice. Archive to my left, Quinnipiac to my right. I'm all alone on the call tonight. William Hawkins, that's me. She will be listening to me and me alone for this broadcast. Both teams' lineups about to be announced, but before tonight's game, I spoke with Coach Dave Smith, so we'll bring you that interview now. Coach Dave Smith, for tonight's game, first things first, Coach, take me through the last weekend. Well, I thought we played uh, really good hockey, especially the first 55 or so minutes, and, um, you know, we were um, pushing the pace, we were doing things the way we want to play, a very even game where we had capitalized on, on three chances and body was moving our net. And then we're going to have a strong push. They get the, the goal, they get an empty net goal, and they have a strong fourth. And let's say just the statistical outcome of the uh, statistical outlook of the game, but they're really happy with, with how we played. Yeah, that's something you, you always try to say every time I talk to you is that, you know, you might change the statistical outlook of the game at any point, but you always seem to have the minds of never change it. Well, we try, right? We try. We try to, you know, set the temperature rather than react to a temperature. And um, I thought, again, we were prepared for the boiling situation, but we didn't handle it great. We didn't we didn't play great. If there's three things that you've got to do well, we did one of them really well. We defended right around our net very well, and we were very desperate there. So um, that got us, uh, helped us get the win. You might just answer a question there, but do you think there was any panic after they got that second goal? But there was definitely we got on our heels. There was momentum. Um, Clarkson had some momentum. They had you know a good crowd behind them, and um, you know a lot of fights hard to end anybody's season. So um, it, it, the momentum was definitely on their side there, and uh, we, we didn't do enough to put squash it. Going off momentum again. How do you you know gather that momentum? Just came twelve seed being a five seed, and now you're going into this game as the biggest underdog in college hockey this weekend. I mean, you know, try and take your run back build the Cinderella run. We know it seems like a pretty big underdog. I'm pretty sure um, we're one and in the playoffs and they're all in all. So maybe our playoff experience so much far can help us. So we, we've got to have the same mindset. We have to get after it. We've got to, you know, take the game where we want it to go. It's just the same on every night. We've got to take the game where we want it to go. We're trying to take the game where they want it to be played. And um, obviously a really talented team and well-coached, well-disciplined, and, and deep in all areas. So you know, we've got to be dialed in and ready to play. I obviously mentioned it, how strong the team is. is. What do you see some of the keys guys to go after? You know, where are the keys to the game? Are you going to shut down the clown graph on the power play? Um, but they'll do that. I mean, they've got uh, the top two lines. Um, you're not afraid to play them a lot. And uh, the really good and decor is deep into all plays. So well, it's a really good hockey game. Well, that's what you expect in the playoffs. Is there any specific moment in this game that you think is going to be particularly important, whether it's, you know, a certain period of break or any, you know, power play or anything? Like, what are you looking for tonight to try to swing this game? Well, I, I can't predict um, the way the game's going to go. The game's going to ask, ask questions. Are you ready? To the power play. Are you ready for a full stop? Are you ready for opening puck drop? It's the only one that we can control. So the game will ask questions just by the way it's played, and we got to be prepared to answer them. I'm actually going to go in the national poll this week. I don't know if you saw that, but you think that provides you know, any kind of motivation or boost or anything? Oh, I'm happy we did. It wasn't my event. I, I don't do a lot, but uh, again, I think people recognize that we did going into Clarkson, uh, a tough building against a good team that had high expectations, was was not an easy feat. And um, I know our guys were, were happy to get that vote. Very much for talk tonight. Thanks.
So we are now just about a minute away from puck drop here at MNT Bank Arena on the campus of Quinnipiac University. You're listening to Engineer Hockey on 91.5 FM, WRPI. For the engineers are in the red, red, red sweaters with the white stripe going from hand to hand over the shoulders and down the line. They also got the white band around the waist. Red pants with two white stripes at the bottom and a red line going down the outside of the pants. They got red socks with a white band around the knee. Quinnipiac, on the other hand, is in their yellow sweaters with double blue stripes around each elbow and around the waist. They've got the dark blue pants and yellow socks. The referees for tonight are Kenneth Gates and Cameron Lynch. Linesmen are Phil Kitchen and John Ray. Both teams take to their benches as we get ready for opening puck drop here at MNT Bank Arena. This will be quite the fight for the engineers tonight. They come into this game, the biggest underdog in college hockey this weekend. Quinnipiac at minus 900 to win this game as RPI wins the opening draw. Larry Suri collects it. He's first sending it over to Jack Agnew. Agnew plays a pass here to Ganyo, who sends it down and chasing his Beelin. This will go for an icing. And we will move the puck down to the other side of the ice as we got our first whistle. 18 seconds into this game. RPI started off really fast last week, scoring just 20 seconds into the game versus Clarkson to jump out to an early 1-0 lead. Looks like there will not be a 20-second goal in this one, as that wrist is fired, fired from Jaden Lee just outside the dot. And it did go up into the netting. Officials deliberating for a second there as to whether or not it did leave the area of play. They determined it did. So now we'll get a face-off to the left of Jack Watson. That'll be Trevor on the draw. He'll be opposite Dovar Tinling. As you can hear, the RPI pep band is here for the second straight game, as this one is won by Cliff Piak, looking to set up a shot to Moore right by the net, but that one was deflected by an RPI defender to break up that play. Now scrum in the corner here. The RPI able to poke it away. Hodson has it poked away from him. Now playing off the boards as Tinley will get another icing as Lee gets to the dot first, but Hodson in pursuit. And we'll send it down the length again. Jalen Lee, the captain of the Bobcats. He, he hails the defenseman. He hails from North Vancouver, British Columbia. A graduate student standing at 5'9", 160, previously playing for the Power River Kings, as this one is quickly won by the Bobcats and a shot fired from the point by McGee. C.J. McGee, the graduate student from Pearl River, New York, 6'0", 180, previously playing for the Shreveport Medvegs of the NAHL. And we'll get a faceoff to the right of Watson. Looks like it's going to be Tipper, and he'll be opposite Brad McNeil. Tepper wins the draw. Kennington gets it out by the point. He plays it over to Tellier, who fires one that goes up into the netting. Not sure if that one caught a deflection on the way. But we got another face off to the right of Watson. This one will be to the right of Watson. It will be Tupker and McNeil again. This one's won by Tupker. Going in to get it was Tellio. Now, Fillion with it. Fillion sends it around. Brack coming in there. He's working up against McGee. McGee with it behind the net. McGee working here against Arnaz. Arnaz poking that one out to Brackett. Brackett looking to play him off the boards. It takes a hit. And now Bouchet going here. Two on three. Looking for Gofredo from the net, but he can't get quite enough on it for McNeil to get to it. This one's poked away, and that's Lucas Mata, the extra skater for the engineers tonight, sending it back down. He was on the right side of the red line, so no icing. And now Sipperone looking to go off for the boards, but he gets knocked down by Swolinski. Swolinski then gets knocked down 
by Cernecki in there. Cernecki in there walking in. You probably shot deflection. This one's out. And that's a goal for Puna Pia. Anthony Cipolo picked up the pieces to put that one into the vacated net. Watson attempted to dive on it, but it got poked away from him. And buried the Quarapiax up to an early 1-0 lead. Dave Smith wants a word here. Probably asking for a potential goaltender's interference. Assistant coach Matthias Long is on the earpiece. Awaiting instructions from RPI replay assistant. No, but we'll say it is good. And they will drop the puck goal stands. No review did take place. And it's the draw is won by Quinn Piak, the central length. Rosani plays it between his legs. Now it's picked up by Christoph Telle. Now up to the point to Rassinen. Rassinen fires the new that's blocked by Danio. Danio pushes Rassinen down. Rosani working to deal with, pick up the pieces, but it's pushed the other way. So he will get it in the corner. Now Surdy behind the net with it. Surdy playing up to Gagne. Gagne near the dot. In the arc that defense zone, he plays it off the glass. That one goes to length. No icing. The goal now announced for Anthony Cipollone, assisted by Victor Cerneski in there, and Alex Power. As Moore gets it right near center on the blue line, sends it there. Pulls the net, takes a deflection. Now Surdy with it. Looking to play it to Booty, but that one is picked up instead by Quinnipiac. Now it's the world going into the zone to pick up the puck. Now that one's played back towards center near Colin Graff. Now Colin Graff down low. Now tic tac toe playing. Oh, Watson gets the right out to deny him. That was a nice play by Colin Graff to feed his teammate in the slot. Looking to get the Fake, you know, fake to the near side, try to go around Watson, but Watson was there with his leg. That will do it again. Now in the slot, corner Piak, that was Lee. Now Booty into the corner, trying to break this one up. Now Surdy takes a whack at it, trying to get it out of the zone. And now flying in there, knocking Booty off his ground, was a corner Piak skater. Now the puck's still in the arc right defensive zone. It was near the blue line for a while. Now Torero over to Graf on the near side. Graf still with it. Graph. Now, right near the net, that was a nice play into the slot. Now, Graf again, he makes a move on Pyron, takes a shot, and is rejected by Watson. This one goes the length. Will it be on net? No, this will be icing. So, it is icing against the engineers. The linesman standing right there to make sure no changes happen. Watson. Trying to make his case that he was, in fact, on the ice, but officials aren't buying it. So Booty will get back out there. Draw will be to Watson's right, the near side. There will be Chernevsky in there, and it will be opposite Chicarello. That one's fired in from the point by Pennington. Now Agnew in the corner. Agnew's still with it. Now that one's picked up by Alex Power. Now, Surdy takes it away, looks to push it to Agnew in the near corner, looking for Payant, but it's poked away. Now, going to the next Chicarello, he pushes it to Payant. That one crosses the blue line. RPI will go back and make the change. Now, Trineski and Air, he'll dump it in. Power chasing into the corner, but Ardenaz is there as well. Trineski and Air, that was fired in and gloved by Watson. Now, 15.34 left to play in the first period. We got a whistle. Quinnipiac leading 1-0. The engineers on the defensive end of pretty much this whole game so far tonight. Last time out against Quinnipiac, they were the ones that jumped to the early lead, which is really the position you're going to have to be in to have a chance against Quinnipiac. But the engineers nonetheless find themselves in a 1 0 deficit. Not you know, an undiggable hole, but certainly a hole, especially against a team as strong as Quinnipiac. This puck is back in play now, Rassin in at the point. He loses it, and this one gets sent into the zone. Hudson looking to pick it up, but it's picked up by Legault. Charles Alexi Legault, number six, the defenseman for Quinnipiac. Second line. 
Now it's picked up by Rassenden again. Rassenden cross pass looking for Fillion. That one's intercepted by Smolenski. Now Heidemann. Heidemann sends one in to the far corner. Hodson's there. Hodson looking to make a play on it, but he gets pushed down. Now it's picked up by Jimmy Gofredo. Gofredo dumped it in, but Hodson was off sides. And Lego picks it up behind the net. Where we'll bring it up now, being pressured by Brackett and McNeil. Brackett really making a play here, and he's able to knock the puck away. Brackett comes away with it. McNeil's there as well. Now Brackett, Brackett right in front of the crease. He fires it in. Now Rochette, Rochette, rookie's to make a move. Rochette had an empty net in front of him, but just couldn't quite get the shot off. Now Gafredo, Gafredo up to the point of Payant. Payant looking to move around Cipollone. Oh, so it's Arnaz, rather, number 11. Now, Bouchette absorbs a hit there. Now, Racket, Racket fires one in, but he's denied. And now, Sabone and Bracket getting tied up a bit here. Sabone now drives Bouchette into the glass. Kopiak going the other direction. Some nice point check there by Engineers to get that puck back. And this one is way up into the netting. Shot fired by Andon Sabone. So Bowen, the freshman, is standing at 5'10", 170 out of Stanford, Connecticut. Previously playing for the Youngston Phantoms, Phantoms of the USHL. In 34 games this year, 9-12-21. Puck is dropped. That one's sent up off the glass and into the bench. And we'll get a face-off here. We'll see where the officials will place it. It will be the RPI defense zone to the right of Watson. Then it'll be Beaton to take the draw opposite Sam Lipkin. It's one by Beaton. Sturdy there to collect in the corner. Brings that to Muzadi. Muzadi looking to tip it forward, but Jane Lee was right there. To keep in the zone, but it gets to Surdy, and Surdy takes it over the red line, dumps into the corner of Ganyo, chasing. There's Moore. Rupert Moore looking to play it to Lipkin. Lipkin gets it back to Moore. Moore behind the net. Now Surdy coming in to try to make a play on it, but he misses on it. It goes back to that defensive zone, where John Beaton will send it over to Agnew. Agnew near side, playing it back to Beaton over center ice. Beaton's getting in now. He has a poked away, but it goes right to... Heidemann fires a quick shot, but that one finds a defenseman instead. Now, Quinnipiac going the other way. Lipkin, that's for Laura, laying out. Now in front of the net, and Heidemann takes out the Quinnipiac skater. That was Cooper Miller, the skater right into him. Good defensive play there by Austin Heidemann. That was one sent the length of the ice and will be icing. And now the officials coming over to make sure Quinnipiac hadn't made any changes. Face off to the left of Duplacy. One by engineers. Hodson collects. The further at the point, saying, Oh, the model, model firing it in, but he just finds graph. Now he fires that one to the corner. But Jake Morgan of Quinnipiac is there to collect it. Now Trinesky in there, over center ice. Trinesky there, dumps into the corner. Hill chase. But Mata gets there first. Lucas Mata. Now a long pass here from Bill Martinley looking for Heidemann. Heidemann knocks it down. Griffith blows a tire. Now a nice move here by Sipolo, who fired the shot in, but it's blocked by Mata. Now Mata again. Mata looking to push it out here to Hodson. Hotson just trying to get out of the zone, but his light pass is picked up by Trinesti in there. Trinesti in there dumps into the corner. Mata chasing behind the net. Mata sending over to Hotson. Same play again, but Hotson loses his footing. Puck bounces into the air. Tindling there. He's able to get out of the zone. That would popped up into the air. It looked like it hit someone in the outside bench, but play continues on. Now Lucas Mata looking to make a play on it. This one's pushed towards center ice. Dangerous opportunity there. Now again, quick back on possession. Now Bruchette. Bouchette with the puck, but he loses it to McGee. McGee sends it down behind the net. Watson settles it. Watson will play it over, but this one is picked off the boards by Christoph Taylor. 
Christoph Bruno. This one is put along the neutral zone. Pennington picking it up on the near side. He sends it into the corner after absorbing a hit from McNeil. Now puck into the far corner now. That's Christoph Tellier with it. One of two Christophs on this Quinnipiac team. Quinnipiac back on possession. That's Tupker. Over to Rossinen. Rossinen sends it around the glass into the far side. Making a play on there is Brion. Now back up to the point to go. Now to Rossin in the near side. Rossin will fire one in, but it's blocked by McNeil. McNeil has an out for the engineers over to Brackett. Brackett some space in front of him. He make a move. He's on here to go. And we got a penalty here for tripping, I believe. Brackett had a pat to the net, but he was tripped up. We'll see who they called it on. That's going to be on the go, I believe. Yes, Charles Alexi Legault will sit two for tripping. 10.47 to play here in the first period. The engineers trailing in the Bobcats, score of 1-0. to zero. The engineers will really look to build some momentum here. Try to get one back. You know, really got to take advantage of the opportunities if Quinnipiac is going to give them to you. Put us off to the right of Duplacy. It's won by the Engineers. Out to Agnew, but he gets it poked away by Lee. Muzani sends it back to Agnew. Now Agnew, over the blue line, playing it back to Beaton. Beaton and Heidemann now. Beaton over to Heidemann. Heidemann over the blue line, playing it to Muzani. Muzani gets it poked away here, and chasing back to get it is Ganyo. It looked like number 28, Sam Lipkin. Of the Bobcats dashing to it, trying to get a rush there on down a man. Now, highly into the offensive zone. Like, oh, look, a shot. That one's saved by Duplacy. But Arpad picks up the rebound. Now, Agnew holding Muzani for a second. Muzani fires running away from it. And then Beaton got a tip on it, but it was over the goal. Now, back up to Muzani. Now, over to Hyman. Hyman near the slot. Hyman turning around. Back towards the net. He's being pressured by Trinesti in there. Daniel, back to Agnew at the point. Now, Hyman. Heidemann front and center. Heidemann. Now to Ganyo. Back to Heidemann. Face the shot. How far is that one in? That one goes wide. This one goes into the corner. Muzani muscling for possession there. He's working up against Quillen. This one's fired the length of the ice by Quinnipiac. And Watson will settle. 45 seconds left to play in the man advantage for the engineers. Some nice opportunities there. But Quinnipiac able to get a fair number of clearances. Now Smolensky leaves it back for Gafredo, who plays it over to Tindley. He sends it up to Bruchette. Bruchette steps it into the corner and chases, working against Rossinen. He makes a hit on Rossinen to free up some space for the puck for Gafredo to come in. But Quinnipiac gets there and sends it the length. Smolensky picks it up. 20 seconds left to play in the man advantage for the Engineers. Smolensky leaves it back over for Booney. Who leaves it for Tindley, rather. He leaves it for Hudson. Working for Bruchette. Hudson there. Potts loses his footing. Three seconds left to play the man advantage. Coming out of the box now is Lavelle's. This one goes the length of the ice. No icing. Power play still in effect when he sent that one down. Bobcats back to full strength. Now Smolenski. Smolenski looking to send to the zone. Now bringing it into the zone is Piccarello. He makes a move. But that one's deflected and goes high up into the air into the corner. This one's sent back by Quinnipiac. Arnaz picks it off in the RPI defensive zone. Now Payant looking for Surdy, but he misses on it, but collects it off the boards. Now tipping that in is Hudson. That one goes behind the net. Chikarello here on one side, pen looking to pressure Pennington. Pennington gets around his man. Now Surdy sends it in, but Payant was offside, so after have to touch up. Now Payant coming in. He has a hit there in the corner. On Jake Martin. Now Marcellus. Marcellus getting towards center. Quick play to Colin Graff. Colin Graff near guy. He fires one and that was deflected. And there's a clear fact skater there. But rushing in was Bouchette. Now Bouchette, who was a little off the icing. Now Brackett. Brackett near side. Playing it over to Payant. Or Beaton, rather. But he was too fast on it and pushes it away from himself. Now Quinnipiac looking in the direction. But a Plays a little too fast and picking it up was Nick Strom. Now chasing into the corners, beat in. Now going into the other way is Tupker for the Bobcats. Tupker over the red line, playing it's filling on to his left. Bill on fire the shot, that one goes high. 
Hits off the back boys. Now Vanya with it. Vanya over the blue line. Vanya over the red line. He dumps it in. He'll chase himself into the corner. That will end up behind the net. Vanya there with it. Now crashing is McGee. Now Smolinski ran from the net. For near the slot rather. He fires to the far side to Timling. Timling behind the net with it. Timling behind the net. Getting pressured by Tucker. Now behind the net still. One finally leaves that scrum. Goes to McGee in the far corner. Tupper standing at 6-1, a couple has a couple of inches on Dover Tindling. Now Smolensky. Smolensky and Muzadi in the near point. Now Muzadi spins and will chase it into the corner. Working to free up some space for a fellow engineer to pick it up. Heinemann. Now this one is picked up by Lego, but Tindling able to create some space. Now Heinemann can't get it off his stick though, and eventually does, but it finds no one other than Cooper Moore. Now, Quillen, right in front of the net, shot fired and a hard wrister by Lego. That one went wide. Now, going in the way, the engineers, McNeil over the blue line, looking for Hotsey, looking to center it for Heidemann, but that one was deflected. Good opportunity there, but just couldn't find that pass towards the crease. Now, the mid range pass here is poked away by Agnew into the arc by corner near side. Now, Gofredo with the puck. Afraid of looking for Hudson, he sends it right to Rassinen. That's uh, number 17 for War of the Bobcats. RPI back on possession. But Graf comes in to pick up the puck at the point. Now, a spin move made here by Trelaw. Graf's Trelaw, the senior from Kalmar Sweden. Now walking and firing a shot down the slot. That was Jake Morgan. Now, Morgan at the point. He fires that one, and now it takes a deflection, and covering it up is Watson. So at 5.18, we look at the media timeout of the first period. I'll take this opportunity to go over the lines. Top line for the engineers, Dovar Tindley being centered by Hotz on the left and Austin Hyden on the right. John Bean centers Sutter Muzzati and Jake Gagno. Brad McNeil centers Jack Bracken and Ryan Bruchette. Danny Ciccarello centers Brendan Booty and Jeremy Payant. Defensive, defensive pairings, Nick Strom and Matt Smolinski, Larry Surrey and Jack Agnew, and Nick Ardenaz and Jimmy Gofredo, and Lucas Mata is your extra offensive skater for the engineers, Jack Watson in goal. For the Bobcats, Travis Trelaw centers Sam Lipkin and Colin Graff. Jacob Crowan centers Mason Marcellus and Andon Sabone. Zach Tucker centers Christoph Fillion and Christoph Tellier. Victor Cherneski in there centers Anthony Asipalone and Alex Power. And your defensive pairings are Cooper Moore and Jaden Lee, Yvari Rassanen and Charles Alexi Legro, Davis Pennington and CJ McGee, and Jake Martin was your extra defenseman for the Bobcats. Bobcats are headed by Rand Pecknold, who is currently in his 30th season with Quinnipiac. No accomplishment higher than last year's national championship, which you can see it memorialized throughout MT Bank Arena. As the skaters take back to the ice, looks like the faceoff will be to the left of Watson. On the ice for RPI, Beaton, Muzadi, Strom. Danyo and Smolinski. And it'll be beaten on the draw. See, can't quite see who that is out there for, oh, it's number 17 as well for the Bobcats, Travis Trelore. So it's won by Quinnipiac. Picked up behind the net there by a Quinnipiac skater. Now in the corner, that's Alex, that's Colin Graf being pressured there by Max Smolinski. Smolinski eventually gets the puck, plays it over to Strom. Strom back to Smolinski, but it goes to the point instead to a Quinnipiac skater. That's Jaden Lee. Now leaving it for Colin Graff. Now back up to the up near point to Moore, but that one left the zone. Quinnipiac will have to reset. Troy there skating in, looking to play out the boards himself, but instead finds Smolinski, who plays it over to Strom. Now to Gagne. Gagne is looking to send it far to Bracket. Icing waved off. Now crashing in, here's McNeil. McNeil has some space in front of him. He fires a shot, that one's deflected and goes into the netting. 
We've got a face off here in the Quinnipiac defensive zone. Face off will be to the right of Duplacy. It'll be McNeil opposite Tupper. 426 left to play in the first period. Quinnipiac leads RPI 1-0. No draw there. Someone was early. This one won by McNeil. Bruchette was too eager skating in, though, and passes on the puck. Now Tellier. Tellier, let's dump it in. And a tip there by the other Christophe. Christophe Fillion, right in front of the net, but he can't direct it home. Now, Sody pressuring, but he backs off as Legault sends it to length. Icing waved off. Agnew and Tellier racing for it, sending it back to Tupker. Now looking to quickly go the way is Drack Brackett, two on two here for the engineers. He sends in the corner to Bruchette. Now Bruchette being pressured by McGee. Now getting out to Brackett right near the crease. Everyone sniffing on it. This is right for the net. But it's fine, but it was the puck and a whistle blown. It looked like Bruchette tried to kick it in. You can't do that though. Duplacy didn't know where the puck was. It was right under his pad next to his skate. I think Bruchette saw that. Kind of just kind of threw something at the puck. So if this will be to the right of Duplacy, it'll be Tin Wing opposite Quillen. It's won by Tin Wing, Gafredo at the point. Refredo into the corner, but only one there is Pennington. Now, Moore over to Marcellus. Mason Marcellus, number 20 for the Bobcats. Now, Hodson into the corner. Hodson sending it around to Timling. Now, to Arnaz, the point Arnaz hits it off the glass and it goes up into the netting. Hodson makes the catch with the glove. Three sixteen left to play in the first period. The R Prize so trailing score of one to zero. Face off comes out of the road. It'll be beaten opposite Quillen. Face off one by Beaton. Prefer looking to pick it up, looking to get it to Danyo. Now over to Beaton. Beaton takes a hit there. From Rossinen. So he tried to play the puck around him. Now we'll go. We'll go playing it down here to Chabon. Chabon back to Rossinen. Rossinen near the red line, playing it to Marcellus. And this looked like offsides, and yes, they do call it. Looks like Quillen, or one of the skaters for Quillen Piac was well offsides. So the face-off will come out of the zone. It'll be Chernesky and Air opposite Tindling. Near side on the RPI side of neutral ice. That one's fired into the corner by Legault. Smolinski there looking to play it near the Tindling, but it's poked away. It gets poked back to Smolinski eventually. Now Heidemann with it on the near side. Heidemann sending it to Tindling. Now back class by Hodson there. Now sending it in into the corner with Smolinski. He took a hard hit there from a point of PX skater. Now Cherneski in there. Intercepted by Hodman. Two on one here for the engineers. Hodson's there. So is Hodman. It's the net the backhand. He can't find Hodson. Now this one sent the length of the ice, and we will get icing. Oh, no icing. Icing's waved off. Now a long pass here to center ice to Hodman. Hudson pushes it forward. Now, our guy makes a change. Jay Smith with a word there to Heidemann. I think saying that was one touch too many. Now, Watson in some trouble here. Now, more at the point for Quinnipiac. Now, Lee fires that one in. It gets a touch. Now, Surdy chasing it behind the net. He gets it in the corner. He sends that one up. No icing. It didn't reach the dot. Now more, more looking to play it in to Kalor. Now Muzadi, 
Rosati back to Agnew. Over to Sergi. Remember, Beatlin now. Beatlin over the blue line. Long pass to Bruchette. Bruchette turns and picks it up. Now Bruchette back towards the net. Backhand it's to Sergi in the corner. Sergi sends it to the other corner. Now to go further at the point. Now he plays it down low to Brackett. Brackett can't get a touch on it, and it goes into the far corner now. Now poking back, trying to get possessions. Bruchette as Duplacy pushes it aside. Now Strom. Gofredo. Gofredo into the zone. He makes a man miss before losing his footing. One minute off to play in the first period. Now RPI back on possession. Here's Brackett sending it in. Now it takes a deflection, but not in the right direction. You're an RPI fan. Now Moore in the corner. Moore plays it behind between his legs to Trelaw, who plays it near the side to Lipkin. Now Gofredo sends that one in. Into the corner, Duplacy settles it behind the net. 30 seconds left to play in the period. Now Tellier, now Tupker. Tupker working against Tindling. Nice pass by Tupker there, looking for Fillion. Now Hudson with it, with 20 seconds to go. RPI can get one more rush. Hudson and Strom collide. Hyman with it. Hyman looking for Hudson, but it takes, takes a deflection, is intercepted by Tellier. Now Tupker, nine seconds left. Into the corner to fill it all. Now looking to poke away here is Hudson. He does the air. Three seconds left. A little bit of space in front of him. And that will be the whistle. For the end of one period, it is Quinnipiac University 1, RPI 0. The engineer is definitely slow to start that period, falling behind early. But they came back strong. They got the power play. They had some good opportunities. The power play they handled a couple of Quinnipiac, you know, excellent special teams. They got a good number of clearances, killed off the penalty well. They never really seemed too pressed during those two minutes. But the second half of this period was somewhat even action for the engineers, which is really all you can hope for. And they just had a bunch of good opportunities that you could have thought one of them might have gone the right way. They had the opportunity where the puck was right. In the crease to place the unaware of that. And if someone was able to get a stick on that, this game could easily be tied 1 1. The difference so far is the goal from Anthony Sapone, 145 into the game, assisted by Victor Terneski in air and Alex Power. This is just one of four quarterfinal games happening around the ECAC right now. As the college hockey playoffs continue underway, over in Ithaca, Cornell currently leads Harvard 2 0. Hamilton, Colgate, and St. Lawrence are tied 0 0. And Union currently leads Dartmouth 1 0. In the first round of play, the Clarkson RPI game was the only underdog win. RPI looking to continue that. By knocking off Quinnipiac, Clarkson was the five seed, and their season was ended by the Engineers last week. So we mentioned before, Quinnipiac heavy, heavy favorites in the game. At the odds makers put them at minus nine hundred, biggest favorite to win this series, not necessarily win this game, but to win, to advance. The biggest favorite slash biggest underdog. In all of college hockey this weekend. I believe uh, Manny, Ohio is the next biggest underdog in their in their series. But at the end of one period, it is Quinnipiac 1, RPI 0. We'll take a short break and come back in about 10 minutes time to update you if there's any progress in those other games around the league and to prep you for the second period of action. We're listening to Engineer Hockey on 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy. I like some cookies, pizza, popcorn. What's wrong with donuts? Left to their own devices, children wouldn't always be right. Mushrooms! That's why they have you. And you have weight. We provide nutrition information, healthcare referrals, even food to women, infants, children. To learn more, call 1 866 WIC Info. Your child has you, 
Could you have Rick? Brought to you by the National Rick Association and the Ad Council. Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless gas. It can kill you. Don't use anything indoors that burns fuel, such as gasoline-powered generators, tent stove and lanterns, or charcoal grills. Opening doors and windows or using sand won't prevent a build up of carbon monoxide. Never offense and chimneys check to make sure water heating and gas press exhausts aren't dead. If you feel sick, busy, or weak while using a generator, get the fresh air right away. Message from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Oh, no, there's no. Once upon a time, Crash was simpler. Hey, Crash. Crash, take out the buds, please. If I find out you'd be tying 900s in a half pipe without your armor, I'm taking away your cell phone. Come on, Mom. Skateboard, roller shoes, mountain bikes, freestyle motocross. When kids play today, they're going faster. And winding up in the trauma center in record numbers. We don't expect kids to stop their extreme sports and start playing Simon Says. But parents, at least make sure your kid wears the right safety gear. It really can save bones and lives. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons and the Orthopedic Trauma Association. For more information on safety here, visit orthoinfo.org. This is the home of Fishing and Hockey. Ready to report now, FM, the Lucky Eye Troy. Nine years. Chip, chip, by the sixth grade, the new girls lose interest in technology. Parents can help keep them updated. Go to girlsmedtech.org. Terms announcement brought to you by Girl Scouts of USA and Ash Council. Between two kids and one children, following the partial list of things that are probably happening in your backseat, you are completely unaware. The item is probably central. Those are exploits. probably the ones down there, the old sandwich and the melted down crayons. Anchor, Heather, Rush. The next generation of child safety. Message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and Adjuncts. This is Mark Epana, and once I'm in Troy, I listen to WIPI Troy. Today, you're on the road again. I had lights, huh? I understand. You're working lights, huh? Yes, Smoke and I were up taking the blaze to remind people to be responsible for fires they start. <laughs> well, we're going to make some radio commercials featuring a ranger and talking animals. Well, sounds like what you think, yeah. So, remember, only you can prevent wildfires. Public service message of Smokey Bear, the U.S. Forest Service, State Forest, and Will I Cancel? That brings a public service message in this station on call to recycle. Hi, this is Richard Karn, asking you to help protect the environment by recycling your old rechargeable batteries and cell phones. Chances are you already recycle paper, glass, and plastic. It's just as important to recycle old cell phones and rechargeable batteries. They're the kind you find in power tools, cell and cordless phones, laptop computers, and other cordless electronics. It's easy. 
Just take that old rechargeable battery or cell phone to any participating retailer. Home improvement centers, electronic stores, and other retailers all across America have joined the nonprofit Call to Recycle program. To find a participating drop-off location, call toll-free 877-2-RECYCLE or visit us online at calltorecycle.org. Recycling old rechargeable batteries and cell phones is easy, and it's free. Please, answer the call. To recycle. Ed, can I ask you something? Sure. Where's this? Well, I can't I say no more. You just need to find a Like, Wait, say that now. Jeff. Well, people want to have your things around. Like, say, I think that's Jeff's group of points if you offer. Points? I feel like, oh, I'm trying to... There you go. You don't have to be perfect to be pacified. The word Dr. Talbot from Foster Care just being makes all the difference. Learn more at 1 800 4005. The public service announcement brought to you by Dr. U.S. Kids, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and the Ad Council. This is 81.5 FM, WRPI Troy, the home of FBI, and Junior Hockey. The shooter has to stay in control. That's our legend, Rusty Wallace. Same goes for the highways. That's why professional truck drivers need to buckle up every trip, every time. Your safety belt can keep you in position behind the wheel and in control. Looking out for yourself and everybody else. That's what a professional driver does. So be ready. Be buckled. And remember, you're the professional, the one who drives for a living. The public service message from the U.S. Department of Transportation. Mom, Dad, I'm in eighth grade now. That means those years of peer pressure are way behind me. From here on out, it's all about good grades and living up to totally realistic expectations. Probably the last thing on my mind. You said, I'm too young to drink. When I'm with my friends, I'm going to talk about hearing events in boy bands. I'm going to not curious and keep my out to answer. It's like, or oh, why have a good drink? And do I notice when you have a drink with dinner? Of course not. Looks like I haven't noticed where you keep the alcohol. Oh, and if the opportunity arises to talk to me about drinking, you should definitely continue to avoid it. Wait, if you're doing that, remind me that I'm too young. I'm probably going to say. Real kids are curious about alcohol. 40% of the time by the 8th grade. But I don't know how to say it. You are age drinking about SAMHSA. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. We're back here at MNT Bank Arena on the campus of Quinnipiac University. Just under three minutes left to play. Before, uh, three minutes left to play before we get underway with the second period of action. 
Quinnipiac still reading the engineer's score of one to zero. So to recap that scoring for you, that goal was from that goal was from Anthony Cipollone, assisted by Victor Terneski and Air and Alex Power. There was one penalty in the first period, and I was assessed to Charles Alexi Lago of Quinnipiac. Two minutes for tripping at 9.13. That penalty power play was successfully killed by Quinnipiac. And now to update on the out-of-town scores. There's three other core final matchups currently underway. Cornell at the end of one, leading Harvard 3-0 over at Lina. In Ithaca, on the campus of Cornell, Colgate and St. Lawrence tied after 1-0-0, and Dartmouth at the end of one period trails Union at home. That game play, being played in Hanover, Union for Garnett Chargers leading 1-0. to zero. Those are all first games of a best-of-three series. The ECAC transitioning a couple of years ago, it used to be first round and second round, just with both best-of-three matchups before the semifinals and finals at Lake Placid being single elimination games. And now the first round has moved to a one game winner go home before a second round of the finals still being a best of three series. So their season will end tonight for the engineers. If they're not able to turn the tide here, will be on their heels tomorrow night. To force a game three to keep their season alive. There's still a lot of time to go in this one. There's still 40 minutes of play at least ahead of us as both teams now take to the ice to get ready for the second period here at MNC Bank Arena on the campus of Quinnipiac University in Hamden, Connecticut. The sun has now set. You know, Ben is. Facility is situated atop the hill and overlooks the valley and the university, providing a nice view out over Connecticut. But now the buzzer will sound, and we will get ready. It will be John Beelan opposite Jacob Quillen. Engineers will skate right to left, Bobcats left to right. Draw is won by Quinnipiac. Brasenin looks to make a play on it, but he gets pushed over by Agnew, who now picks it up. And now a dangerous play here. Agnew loses the puck right in the slot. And now looking to clear it by the engineers. The puck does leave the zone. Getting it right back is Clint PX, sending it into the corner. Agnew there with it. Now into the corner there is Marcellus. He gets it out to Lego. Lego finds center. He sends it over to Rossin at the point. Rossin and skates to center, plays it over to Lego. We're going to the line, takes a deflection, and down goes Beaton. Beaton is hurt, and he is slow to get up. He doesn't look to be in too much pain. Now the puck is right here, and put it in the back of the net by Cohen. Just a devastating sequence for the engineers. John Beaton blocks a shot and goes down in the slot. Watson just didn't know where the puck was. And Bowen just picked it up and fires it into the unattended net. So now it's 2 nothing for the Piac Weeds. Trainer Austin Jones coming out to attend to John Beaton. Beaton does get up on his own power. Good to see that. And he will skate off the ice to applause from the crowd. So the engineers trail by two at goal coming the 45 second mark of the second period.
officials making sure everyone has the right number of skaters on the ice. Now it'll be Tim Ring and Trelor on the draw. This one won by Trelor, but someone was early. We'll do it again. Now it'll be Tim Ring and Trelor. Then this one won by Tim Ring that goes right along the red line and slapped in by Colin Graff. That's Willens who picks it up. Now Strom looking for Hudson. Hudson can't make a play on it. Now going the way or the Bobcats playing over Graff on the near side. Career now. Hudson looking to take it away. Now Lee. Lee loses his spinning. Now Colin Graff down low. Career. Career fires the other one. Takes a flexion and going goes into the net. We're we'll gonna whistle here. Now this one will be to the left of Watson. There will be McNeil and Tucker. And Tucker was early. We'll do it again. Um, it's won by Tucker. Tellier spins up to the points of McGee. McGee working against Brackett. Brackett gets it over to Bouchette. To McNeil, who sends it into the corner. Now racing in the corner is Brackett. Brackett there over to Gofredo. Gofredo sending along to McNeil. Now uh, Arden Oz. Now into the near corner here is Bouchette working against couple of Quinnipiac skaters. That goes out to the far side of Afredo. Afredo dumps it in. Now McGee collects. McGee looking for Tupper. Zai looking at Poker Ray and Afredo gets it. Afredo over the blue line. Afredo backhanded passing for Payant, but he misses him. Now going the other way is Fillion. Fillion looking to make a move into a slide. Gets it to Tupper. Now Muzadi almost taking an open ice hit there. Now Payant, number two of the engineers, laying out for an amazing block there by Charles Alexi Lego. He just laid out perfectly for it to knock the puck away. Now going the other way, right for the crease and knocking it down and covering it up is Watson. That was number 18 of the Bobcats. Anthony Cipollone in the danger zone there. So 17.30 here, left of the second period. Quinnipiac leading 2-0. Faceoff will be to the right of Watson. Will be Trinesky and Air and Timling. This one's won by Trinesky and Air. Goes out to Lego to run out the point. Playing to Cipollone. Cipollone in the near corner. Timling pokes it away. Now Heidemann. Heidemann's past the Hudson. Picked up by Quinnipiac. Now, three in front, Cipolo, Cipolo going to its goal. He fires that one in. It's blocked away by Watson. Now, Surrey. Surrey firing it up to Hudson. Hudson looking to make a move here to go around. Let go. Give him go here with Heidemann. Now, Surrey in the near corner. Now, Surrey plays it around. Hudson will chase into the far corner. Hudson makes a plan to push it back to the corner. Looking for Tinling, but no one's there. And Trinesky and Air picks it up. Trinesky and Air over to go. Let go across center ice. Now, Mata, Mata looking after the interception, tried to go the other way quickly, but he couldn't settle the puck. So it's pushed back into the corner. Mata will pick it up. Mata over to Payant. Payant there as it poked away. Now, put up the numbers now. Shot fired here. That one goes wide. That one was off the stick of Sabone. Now, Marcellus. Marcellus Booty looking to poke, poke it away, which he does. Now goes to Surdy. Surdy has some space in front of him. He crosses the red line. Now crosses the blue line. Plays at Tricarello. The Payant was off sides. We'll get a whistle here.
Based off in the neutral zone, cheated towards the Queer Piac defensive end. It'll be McNeil and for Roar. One by McNeil. Bouchette backhands it into the corner and will chase it himself. That one takes a bounce, goes to the far corner. Rasmonski trying to make a play here. Going up against the Lipkin. This one was the length of the ice. Stromer got there first to touch it up for an icing. So let's send this one all the way back down. John Buehling comes out of the bench, tries out some move on the ice, testing out the strength of the legs. He takes a stick. It looks like he's backed in the lineup. So that's great to see John Buehling working healthy again. There will be Brendan Buehling on the draw. It's all to the right of his play seat. It's won by Quinnipiac. That was Trelore. Now it goes out to Lipkin. Lipkin sending it high for Graf. Graf takes a hit there. And now Ganyo. Ganyo loses the puck here. And Smolenski looks to right back. Now we're at Muzadi. Muzadi one on one there with Lee, but Lee pokes it away. His pass is intercepted here near side. Now Graf. Graf looking for Trelore. Now Trelore. Over to Lipton, he looks to center near the crease, but no one there for quite a piac. Now pass here to Booty. That went a little too far. And Muzari looking to win it back, and it goes right to Booty again. Booty fires one in, trying to catch Duplacy sleeping, but he doesn't do that. And Duplacy will hold it and will get a whistle. We'll take this moment to remind you that you're listening to NVR Hockey on 91.5 FM, WRPI Super under normal circumstances, I'd also inform you that, that you could point your browser www.wrpi.org and catch our web stream. But currently, due to some networking security, networking issues, I will go that. Our website is currently down, but we will update you on our social media feeds whenever we have an update to our website. Now, this draw to the left of Duplacy, it is one by Tupker. Play back Jake Martin, who gets it to Tellier. Now Pennington playing it off the glass. That one goes to the near corner where Sully looks to make a play on it. But Tellier right back there to pick it up again. Tellier and Pillion. Now poked away by Agnew. This one goes up into the air over the crease. McNeil looking to evade danger. He puts it out to the point. But Pennington's right there to pick it up. Pennington makes a move on the field. Right in front of the net there. Billy only got a tip on it, but couldn't get it home. Watson left him a lot of room. Now looking really, really quickly is Brackett. Brackett getting, he can't get the edge there against Pennington. Pennington knocks it back, looking for Fillion. Fillion over the blue line, over Tupker. Tupker touches it forward. And Kripiak makes a change. Sody with it now. Sody playing into neutral territory. Now Tim Ling chasing it towards the corner. Now we're going to center it. Oh, and not able to knock it home. Hudson had an opportunity there. Now Heidemann. Nice play by Tim Ling to create that opportunity. Now looking to play it to Hudson, who may have been off sides. And now this one towards center. Picked up by Quinnipiac. Now going the other way, Trinesky in there. Trinesky in there into the corner. Tim Ling's there as well. Now this one knocked away for the point. And right for the crease, rather. And Alex Power picks it up. He had an opportunity, but he couldn't score. Now going the other way, all the engineers. Now we got a whistle here. I believe this was a delayed offside. Yes, it was. 13:37 left to play in the second. Quinnipiac leads two to zero. That lead pushed out to 2-0 to zero by the goal from Jacob Quillen at 45 seconds in the second period, assisted by Mason Marcellus and Andon Serbone. Back to center ice is the RPI Pet Band. Gives us a wonderful rendition of Indiana Jones. Now, this one's won by Quinnipiac. Going back to pick it up is Legault. Legault going behind the net with it now, absorbing a hit there from an oncoming engineer. Now, Marcellus, Beaton looking to poke it away. Nice to see Beaton back in the line. Now, it's centering to, towards Quillen. Quillen's a shot attempt was his wrister, as he got set up for the wrister, was knocked away by, I think that was Gagno. Now, Marcellus 
over the red line, and over the blue line to Sorbonne. Sorbonne back to Quillen. Quillen looking down low for Marcellus, up to Lee. Lee now walking in here, probably the shot one's deflected, now to Beaton. Beaton's on Musadi, Musadi with space in front of him, Musadi over to Payon. Payon goes for a center, he buys that one in, but that was blocked away. Musadi getting tangled up there with Lee. Now, the other way is Quillen. Grand Peckmiller is leaving his arm about something. He's still probably ones are calling at center Uzadi. Now, Sergi. Sergi long pass here to Chicarello. Chicarello over the blue line. Tips into the corner. That one's pushed back to Pennington. Loser goes high up into the air and into the seats. Gentlemen, I believe that's a offer in the air. Granger Kersey. Quite uh, gentleman saying next to the man in the Ranger jersey claims possession of the ball. Now let's go back into the Quinnipiac defensive zone. Will be to the right of Duplacy will be the draw. There will be McNeil and Trelaw. The Lord seems to be early. Now it's one by McNeil, who Pouchette unable to settle in. Tellier picks up the puck over to Pennington. Pennington looking for Trelaw, but he passes it instead to Agnew. Now Agnew's long pass to Bracken is picked up by Trelaw. Now Trelaw looking to center it to Limpkin. And now Surdy over to Bracket. Bracket pushes it forwards. Gets spun up. Pennington collects it in the far corner. Pennington playing off the backboards, looking for McGee. McGee with the puck over the red line. He's playing it to his right to tell Ray. Now, bouncing right here. McGee picks it up at the dot over to Pennington. Pennington fires that one in. It's gloved by Watson. Nice play there by the Bobcats to turn possession quickly. So both teams will make a full change. So Martin, the party is taking notice of the game tonight. As I look from the press box down to my right, under me I can see what look to be some scouts from Boston College getting there, you know, ready to take on Quinnipiac in the NCAA tournament. It's back underway here as Quinnipiac wins the draw. They get a shot from the point. RPI gets knocks it the other direction. Quinnipiac back on possession now. Now Arnaz with the whack at it. Over to Heidemann, over to Hudson. Hudson over the blue line. He stops and turns there. Now over to Arnaz. Arnaz was facing front of him near the slot. He looks to reset. Skates back out to the point. Plays it to Hudson. Hudson sells it with the glove. Looking back for Arnaz and poking away his Alex Power. Grafredo there. He looks to poke it towards the net. This was right in front of the priest. Arnaz cuts the lead to one at 11 11 in the second period. RPI gets on the board. Click Arnaz there to pick up the pieces. RPI has had those chances all night. Pucks bouncing around near the crease. And finally, they're able to capitalize on one. And Quirk now leads two to one. So that one coming at 8.49 in the second. to we'll see who the assists are credited to. And John Bean back on the ice to take the draw following the goal. John Bean wins the draw, but immediately Colin Graff is there to pick it up. Now going the other way, Kofiak for Lure. Looks strong, looking at clearance. Ambos players just found the speed of Kralor. Now into the far corner there. Colin Graff takes it from Smolenski, who gets the puck back. Now Graff, now down low, this one right near the post. Puck is still loose. Smolenski takes a hit there. Now Trelore, back by the net is Graff. Graff will get a turn around. This one from the crease, bounce around. Now Rosani there. Now getting tied up was Beaton and Gagno. Now back into the zone. Now numbers here for the Bobcats. Now Trelaw is saying it back through the crease, looking for Lipkin. Lipkin wasn't quite there. Now this one's fired. It hits off the post. That one off the stick of McGee, I believe. 
Now back out here to the point. Now we're calling Graf at the point. He sends that one long to Moore. Moore seeing firing on that one passing around. Getting a by this Watson. Puck is still loose. Looking at Fisher Holm, but play is still going. Now Smutsky with room in front of him. There's three skaters in the goal at one point. Like we said, trolling up the engineers. He gives the pass. No, oh no, it's blocked by Rosati. Bruchette's able to get around the diving man to find the pass to Rosati. Rosati can't find the back of the net. Now Quinn in the far corner. Now Bruchette. Bruchette fires that one back. Our chase into the corners bracket. Now Surdy fires a shot and it's covered up. That one was blocked down. There was a second chance, but Duplacy covered it up. And it stayed away from the extra cook who was occurring in his crease. As this is 9.33 off the go in the second period, and this is the second period media timeout. That's an exciting action on both sides of the ice there. That's our guy skaters keeping their heads up as a bunch of skaters are you know, in, in the net or on the ground on the right guy and to go the other direction quickly. Unable to get a goal out of it, but we only got a face off. It was always Dave Smith draws up a play. As we now get the air guitar cam. In the first period, Filipiak had nine shots on goal. RPI had seven. Looking at the attack zone statistics, all the shots for the engineers in that first period came from the goal. was pretty much right side, a couple right in the front. There's two near the left side dot. From the goal, the, the goal, you know, left to right being from the goal's perspective, Quick Yak having shots all over the board. Looking at face offs, Jersey 10 1 by the Bobcats, 8 1 by the Engineers. So now, first off, to the right of Duplacy, it'll be Timbling opposite Quillen. Some more delays here. And now the puck is dropped. It's won by the engineers. And Lulu is putting there was Hodson. Okay, so score now being announced. Austin Heideman with the secondary assist. Now, Cerny has the puck poked away with him. Nice play by Tilly to keep in the zone. Now, over to Hudson. Hudson fires the one that goes wide. Tilly cuts in the far corner. Tilly now pushing over to Heidemann. Heidemann gains the point to Cerny. Cerny at the point now. He takes the slap shot. He fires that one looking for a deflection. But it does get deflected, but not towards the net. Now, Pennington will get poked that one back in towards neutral ice. That's poked back his direction. Now, going to the way is Hudson. Hudson stays in front of him. Hudson plays it over to Beaton. Beaton playing into the corner, chasing his Heidemann. Now chasing there as that one goes far will be Max Smolinski. He'll collect it near the RPI blue line. He sends that one up to Ganyo. Ganyo gets a poke to right now. Going the other way are the Bobcats over Marcellus. On comes Chernesky now right for the goal. And that was pushing him to the back of the net. All right, number 27 of the Bobcats and Don Sirvon gets the lead back out to two. Racing no time after the media timeout. We're able to get a turnover, generate some space, and just set up for that pass perfectly. And the one timer pushing it to the right of Watson as Watson is faced towards the incoming skater. It's now 3 1 lead for the Bobcats, and the deficit is again 2 for the engineers. Now, Quinnipiac back on possession here. 
Tessapalone, Trinestian Air. Trinestian Air at the point. He's that one's in around. Tupker now behind the net. Tupker at the point. So Rossum on the far side. He fires the one. Hits off the back forwards. Cipollone there to pick it up. Now to Booty. Booty pushing it over to Gagno. Gagno sends the right here. And we'll get icing. But Uthle one wants to play in the second. Queen of Piax leads RPI three to one. Face off to the right of Watson. It'll be beaten opposite Lipkin. So it looks like beaten with early, so we'll do it again. Face off one by Lipkin. Over to Moore. Moore back in it to Graft. Graft back to Moore in the corner. Over to Lipkin. Lipkin hunt behind the net. We'll go at the point. He whips on it. Now Booty looks to pick it up. Now Daniel's there. Daniel pushing it forward. So Lebeau picks it up now. Now this one's pushed up to the back of the ice as Watson settles it, leaving it for Agnew. Now Bracket. Bracket over to McNeil. McNeil hits off his back. He's there now. McNeil turns. McNeil playing it but down to Bracket. That one's intercepted by Trelore. Trelore skating with it now. He fires it down. It goes on. Nope, not on goal. It will be icing. Sorty there to get there first. Now I'll send it back down to the other side of the ice. <laughs> Face off will be to the right of Duplacy. On the draw will be Timling opposite Trelore. One by Timling. Agnew at the point, but he can't settle it. And then there's off the resells. Agnew goes back to get it. Agnew over to Hudson. Hudson crossing the blue line, now crossing the red line. Now Hudson, Hudson space looking to make a move, but it's poked away. By McGee. Now Trelore. Trelore getting pushed along the boards there by Tim Ling. Agnew and Surrey will sub off. Smolenski and Stroll will come on. Now a big hit there on Trelore. Trelore will lumber now into the bench. This will be icing. Look like Kaloya heading straight to the locker room or just in the area outside the locker room as he's attended to by a athletic trainer. He looks to just have the wind knocked out of him and hope to, that he's okay. Face off now to the right of Watson. There'll be Tupper opposite Timling. Timling was early, so we'll do it again. 6.36 left to play in the second period. Quinnipiac leading shots on goal 16-12. to 12. This one is won by Quinnipiac. Now, in front of the net with a shot there, spilling on. Now, Tucker in the corner. Now, back up to Pennington. Pennington just barely keeps in the zone, but his shot goes wide. Now, this one back out to back to Pennington again, but he trickles it out to Hudson. Now, Hyman had a chance to make a play, but he'll still, he'll instead sub off. Engineers making some changes. McGee. McGee firing that one not on goal, and this is icing. So Tyler will not head to the bench, and this one will go down to the other side. We'll see which side of Duplacy the official is set up in. Yeah, this one is to the left. To the left of Duplacy, Tucker opposite. So it's like Chicarello. Tucker was early. Puck is dropped and won by Chicarello. Getting out to the point. Arnaz tipping it into the corner. Now filling on, pa back passing it, but intercepted there by the engineers. Now Chicarello looking to make a play on it, as are two Bobcats. Chicarello does come away with the puck and Pionel gets tripped up, but no tripping is the call. 
Patrick Erler with it. Pionk to Ardenaz at the point. Ardenaz now front and center. He fires that one in. Patrick Erler there. Pionk now with it. Pionk looking to make a move, but Tellier able to get a stick there. Quinnipiac has not really fallen for any of the stick moves tonight. I've always had their stick in the right places anytime an engineer tries to go around and make a move on them. Now, Sir Bone with it. But his touch a little too hard. The Smolski is able to get a touch on it. That way, there is Quillen. Quillen is right in front of the net, playing it back there, looking for Marcellus, but Marcellus whiffs on it. Now, Smolski. Smolski over the blue line, playing it to Bracket. Bracket over the blue line now, near corner, bounces to the far corner, bounces to the near corner. McNeil is there. McNeil. Big little with a bob tie on either side of him. Now coming away with it is Quinnipiac. Now going into the way. That's Quillen. Quillen over the blue lines. Now Marcellus behind him. He loses for Marcellus. Marcellus now. And Mr. Bones will fire it in and cover it up by Watson. And this will be a face off to the left of Jack Watson. Shots on goal for Quinnipiac up to 17. With 4.37 left to play in the se second period. Quinnipiac leading score of 3 to 1. Eight minutes, 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 minutes. Well, and if we're standing, we're set 6.5, so we're about just on pace for that. Trinesky in there gets ready for the drop. So it's Bovar Timling to the left of Watson. This one won by Timling. Surdy racing for the puck. We're getting there first is Cipollone. Now, looking to play it out to Hudson was Heidemann. That one instead finds a Quinnipiac skater. Now, Alex Powell with it. He throws it over to McGee. McGee back to Cipollone. Soon he gets a stick on it, but Cipollone comes away with it. Cipollone now, now Timling working against him. Now, Hudson sends it in, but that one hits off a skate, stays in neutral ice. Now, Trinesky and Air working against Agnew. Now, Sip alone and we'll go. Now we're fired in by Legos. Pad saved away by Watson. Now more. Agnew near corner. Agnew sending around the boards. Hyman touches it forward. Watson chasing, but he heads straight for the bench. Now Jake Martin. Lipkin tips it in. But only one there is Sergi. Up to Booty. Booty over the blue line, over the red line. Down to Muzadi, who tips it forward. Booty chasing into the corner. Can't get there. Muzadi now looking to make a play on it. Scrum ensuing here. Muzadi is still at the puck. Now Booty with it. Booty loses his footing, though, and this one comes out towards center. Now Booty there into the corner again. Beaton's there as well. Now Gafredo at the point, looking for Beaton, but Beaton can't settle. Now this one towards center to Lipkin. The Lipkin a little too quick on it as Beaton picked it up and sent it into the far corner. Now Jake Martin with it. Bruchette keeping him company. Now Lipkin tips it forward. No icing. Gofredo will pick it up behind the net. Gofredo to Arnaz. Well, Arnaz misses on it. See if he gets there first. He does not. Trelore into the corner with it now. Trelore skating towards center. Far side over, shot fired in, that one went wide, that one off the stick of Lee. Now Bruchette, bracket over the blue line, over the red line. Blue line again, going to the corner, he turns now, center to Gafredo. Gafredo fires a shot, one in, that one's blocked. McNeil was there as well, but great back going the other direction. They have numbers, three on three here. Three on. Now that one's intercepted by Strom. Now, give and go here, McNeil, Bruchette, Bruchette with it. He looks to play that one towards center. Down in the crease was McNeil. McNeil heads to the bench now. On comes Heidemann. Now getting tied up here is Tupper and Smolenski. Payant now playing off the boards, looking to collect himself. That was knocked back in by Quinnipiac. Now that play pass from Smolenski finds Rassinen. That one goes around the glass. Takes a hit there. Now Lee. Lee towards center, shot fired, and a glove saved by Watson. Tupker trying to go top right corner, but Watson had his glove all over it. 135 left to play in the second period. 
So at the time that the Houston Blue House will be getting ready for the Mr. Beast burger minute of the game. We'll see if they have any similar incentive here at MNT Bank Arena. Base off to the right of Watson. It'll be Quillen up to Timling. Now Rossin in. Rossin in with the turn here. Being harassed by Surrey. Now we're ready for the net in front of the crease. Now Puck is loose. Timling looking to get it out of the crease. Puck goes back into the point where it's dumped in by McGee. And now Timling. Now Marcel's back with it. Hudson comes away with it. Three on two here for engineers. They move quickly. Hudson kind of gets tied up with the puck there. He'll just send it in as Duplacy will settle it. But he plays into the corner where Muzadi was right there. Puck tied up in the corner. And Muzadi is there as well as three Bobcats and Tyler Hudson. Now, Hudson able to get it away, but it goes right to McGee. And McGee over to Marcellus. Marcellus over the blue line. He sends it right in front. Setting up there. Fire in front. Puck is not in the goal. It's behind the net. McNeil trying to pull it away. McGee at the point. McGee over the far side to Moore. Now Puck in front of the crease. Surrey gets to it. Surrey is able to get out of the zone. McNeil looking to settle with his glove. Goes a little high. Now we're to Hudson. Hudson holds for a second before firing a shot in. McNeil was offside. Now that one's tipped in by Chernesky in there. He chases as does Strom. Strom looking to knock it the other way, but finds the stick of Trinesky in there. Now it goes back out to Brackett. Trinesky is trying to get in front of the net. Now Brackett will dump it forward. That will go towards the goal, but it takes a deflection, so no icing. Now the other way will go. Five seconds left to play the period. It goes off the backboards into the far corner, and that will be the end of the second period. So after 40 minutes of play, it's Quinnipiac 3, RPI. One. We had a couple of goals in that period. First, at the 45 seconds into the period, we had Jacob Crow, an even strength goal, assisted by Mason Marcellus and Andon Serbone. Then Nick Arnaz came back to cut the deficit to one at 849, assisted by Dovar Tindling and Austin Heideman. And then it was Andon Serbone. To get it out to 3 1 at 11 16, assisted by Mason Marcellus. No second helper on that one. So, another decent period there for the engineers. They have one play where unfortunately Beaton goes down and some confusion. Watson not knowing where the puck is results in that goal. The other play was just a nice setup. By the Bobcats, man crashing on the far side, set up perfectly from the pass from the near side, just tips into the net. Watson not able to get around quick enough. We'll update you on the out of town scores, the other ECIC quarterfinal matchups. So we have Cornell leading Harvard for the one in Ithaca, Colgate and St. Lawrence still tied at zero, no goals there. Dartmouth has jumped ahead of Union. Jumped ahead of Union. They lead two to one now. The Chargers trail the Big Green. Three thirty-one left in the second period in that one. And St. Lawrence and Colgate no score yet. But this could be an error, as it says this game hasn't started yet. But we. No, it has. So I'll see if I can get you the true score to that game. But we'll take a short break. We'll be back in about 10 minutes' time to prep you for the third and final period of action here at MT Bank Arena on the campus of Quinnipiac University in Hamden, Connecticut. You're listening to Engineering Hockey on 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy. I live the army values. I am just, just, just plead and mix things up to guard and ensure them. And the American way of life. I am American soldier. To furnish food, I'm a professional, but you can't have physical money. I'm a thought to the rain. Sponsored by the New York National Guard, or by the New York State Broadcasters Association and this station. 
Do you want these in a seven and a half? How's that built? Can I get that shipped overnight? Is there a direct flight? How long does the warranty last? What's your How do you change the rain towers to so to come to you? Does this bus stop at Elm Street? Yes, questions everywhere. Is it leaving rooms? What does it mean? How much does this cost? Does it have four wheel drive? I believe. So the account balance. Yes, sometime when you get to the doctor's office. Any questions? No. Clam up. Last questions. What's this test for? Are there side effects? Why did I get my results? Questions lead to better health care. Go to ahrq.gov for a list of 10 questions everyone should know. Questions are the answer. Public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Media Services and the Black Council. Suzanne is here with a message from the FDIC. Recently, I got a letter from a woman who took all of her money out of the bank and put it in a shoebox. You know what I told her? Put it back in an FDIC member bank. Wow. If you stay within coverage limits, you can't lose a penny. Go to myfdicinsurance.gov and click on ED the estimator to make sure your money is safe and sound. That's ED at myfdicinsurance.gov. The more you know, the safer your money. This is RPI Hot, you know, WRPI Troy. Not even put on your FM dial and on the internet at WRPI.org. Anyway, even college freshman is supposed to be tough. Let me tell you about my schedule this semester. All 18 credits. The Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I have American Lit at 8.05 a.m. And then I only have 15 minutes to go to my 9.15 Ethics and Value Theory class all the way across campus. Then in the afternoon, Oculus One. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have two lectures that go through lunch. Sociology of Families, then Intro to Microbiology. Three, med. And so now, I have a double lab that ends around nine. P.M. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you. If a kid will do whatever it takes to get through college, will you do the same thing? Please support the United Negro College Fund and call 1-800-332-UNCF. Because a mind is a term of those needs. Public service brought to you by UNCF. Plans can do incredible things. We need every sound in this piece of music. And nothing compares to using them to help save a life. If an adult suddenly collapses, call 911, then push hard and fast in the center of their chest until help arrives. It's called Hands Only CPR. It's recommended by the American Heart Association. Visit handsonlycpr.org today. Message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. I'm Melissa. My name is a rocker from Rock North, Kansas. I also told you that my dad is really nice. Oysters. And I hear Brussels sprouts. Oh, and I'm a lesbian, too. And what's the etheridge? Stereotypes don't tell you much about a person. Here's an honest reminder. Labels belong on records and not on FIFA. Rock is a good service by Human Rights Campaign Fund Foundation. Thank you.
Your know, brain is making sure the air in your home is healthy for your family to breathe. Make sure you test your home for the presence of waiting. It's easy. To learn more, call 866-730-GREENS. Preserve your family's health and well-being. Set your home trusted. Pass living healthy and joy. <laughs> Sure, you trust your home for the presence of Rosary. It's easy. To learn more, call 866 730 Good A message from the US EPA. I couldn't tell. My wife said, you know, but they're going to give some information to stop it. The doctor said, so we don't like it. The truth is, it was off by the My son's doctor said, you're going to teach your son many things in his life. The one thing he's going to teach you is to be patient. Anything doesn't discriminate. This happens to everyone. Black, white, young, old, rich, poor. Every baby has a story. Tell us about your special baby. March of Zion's Dark Tomb. Ice cream stick can make a child smile. And that person will be smile. Let's try to like and keep us going. But did you know these ideas came from the things of the Catholic community? Support the United Nations College Fund as a mind, as a character. It's a currency after the work of the Fund 100 to reach with you to UNCF. Brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. Ten thousand watts of radio power bringing you RPI hockey on ninety one point five FM WRPI Troy. openings for your student DJ here at WRPI. You're going to find out how to join and more importantly, where to link that and now join the browser to WRPI.org for all the contact info you need. Oh, yeah. How's the wall coming? Good. Oh, that looks great. Thanks to that fine lead boost paint. Son, I think you've earned yourself a break. Let's go listen to WRPI Troy. Shoo! That's my boy. <laughs> Isn't technology great? I will not pass gas on a train. I will not pass gas on a plane. I will not pass gas in my house. I will not pass gas near my spouse. I will not pass gas in polite company, not with my friends nor family. I will not pass gas in a bar. I will not pass gas in a car. I will not pass gas where little ones are, no matter how near or how far. I will not pass gas in your face, because the gas I pass is worse than ice, a silent but deadly cloud of toxic waste. The end. Secondhand smoke contains hydrogen cyanide and other lethal gases. Gases that are especially harmful to kids and babies whose bodies are still growing. Never pass gas. Take it outside. Get the facts at don'tpassgas.org. Message from the American Legacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Interrupt this program to bring you a clarifying announcement. We've got some cheap massage. It's really good. Oh, by the
All the way back here at Linden T Bank Arena on the campus of Quinnipiac University in Hamden, Connecticut, getting ready for the third period of action. Both teams taking to the ice now. Coaches at the bench. RPI trailing Quinnipiac, score of three to one. The first, this best of three series. And he has already bested the odds to make it this far. He upset Clarkson University in the first round up in Potsdam. Our pad number 12 seed in this tournament, knocking off number five seed Clarkson. Now coming in, face number one seed Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac currently ranked seventh in the country in the Paralyze. And minding disaster for them in this series. They were conference champion or not. I have a spot in the NCAA tournament. So now we're ready for the center ice draw. RPI will skate left to right, Quinnipiac right to left. The opening draw is won by Quinnipiac. Jalen Reed goes back to get it, sends it along the ice. Someone touched it, so no icing. Agnew goes back to get it. Agnew looks to play out of his own, but it's picked up by instead by more and more starting right now. Playing back to Marcellus, who loses it for a lead. Now chasing in the way is Hudson. He got tied up a bit there but with the skate stick of Lee, but no call. Now Lee puts up, you know, outside the far boards. He sends it in. Gets hit by Sweeney, but Marcellus is right there. Marcellus is going five hole, but clutching it is Watson. 32 seconds into the second period now. We got our first whistle. Okay. Face off will be to the right of Watson. <laughs> It'll be John Dean on the draw. He'll be opposite his opposite, Travis Trelor, pairing of 17s here. This one's won by Trelor, quickly tipped out to Watson in by Lipkin. Lipkin fires that one in, blocked away by Watson. Floor is there. He plays it back to Lipkin. Rossin and now at the point. Rossin fires that one in to Colin Graff. Graff over to Troy. Troy looking to fire a wrist in. That one takes a deflection, goes up into the netting. We're going to face off to the right of Rossin. Now, I've not announced the attendance for tonight's game, MT Bank Arena. Carries a capacity for hockey around 3,500. Awesome. My guess for tonight would be about eight or 900 would be my estimate. Now, look in here. That's there's a crease and covering it up as a Watson. Scrum, you know, face off diet continued beyond after the puck had left the scene there. Now to the right of Watson will be McNeil and Tucker on the draw. One by McNeil. Gets it to Smolenski. Smolenski, long pass, looking for Brackett. Brackett with the blue line. Smith's a field. He goes in. We can make a move. Both in front. Puck is still wide. And now we got a whistle. Brackett crashing from the left side, space in front of him, tried to cut back. His shot was blocked, puck was still alive. He tried to poke it back in, but Duplacy was able to get over it. Face off will be, looks like to the right of Duplacy. It'll be John Bean and take the draw. RPI makes a couple of changes. Tucker on the draw. And one by Beaton. That's Arnaz. Now Gofredo. Gofredo feigns there against Fulion. Now sends it in the first cross the crease. Now Arnaz with it. Arnaz looking to center it. Beaton now. Beaton over to Hodson. Hodson has it poked away there by Tellier. Now Tellier looking to get out to Tupker, but can't find him. And Arnaz gets it. Arnaz now dumping into the corner. Chasing is Beaton. Pennington's there also. Beaton laying a shoulder to Pennington there. It goes out to Talia, who gets it to Tupker. Tupker sends it down, hits off the backboards, and that's icing as Wilfredo gets there first. 18-27 left to play in the third period. Quinnipiac 3, RPI 1. This one will go back down the length of the ice. We'll set up to the right of Duplacy. It will be Tindling opposite McGee. Now 
One by Tinling goes out to Smolinski. Smolinski over to Mata. Mata fires it. takes a deflection. Kyle coming in, trying to pick it up, but getting a stick in his way it was Davis Pennington. Pennington likely saving a goal there. Face off again to the right of Duplacy. It'll be Tindling on the draw here. One by Quinnipiac. Back to Marcellus. Marcellus turning there to create some space in front of him. He sends it back over to Moore. Moore playing it forward to Serbone. Smolenski there. Gets it to Mata. Mata up to Pion. Pion over the blue line. Now hiding over the red line. Jumping into the corner. He takes a hit there from Moore. Pion lays a hit into Leaf. Looking to get it in front of the net to hide him in. But there's Quillen. Quillen now whiffs on it. He pokes it forward. Smolenski's there. So Pion. Now McNeil there as well. Arpai makes a change. McNeil keeping the Bobcats occupied in their defensive end. Now a high and long pass goes into... The fans, this will stay in the art, the Quinnipiac defensive zone. This will be to the left of Duplacy. It will be the assistant captain, Jacob Quillen. First off against John Beaton. And official there, unsatisfied with how the men outside the circle were set up. It's a shot fired from the point there by Agnew. Now Moore going the other way over the blue line, over center ice. He's alongside Serbone. Now he skates in, makes a turn there, walks it back towards center, goes past Serbone. Now Trinesky in there. Trinesky in there, flips to fire it in. That one goes. Out towards middle to Lego. Now shot fire from the far side by Moore. Now picking it up is Hudson. Hudson going the other way now. Hudson going towards center, looking to get to Muzadi. Muzadi held up there as he runs into Lego. Now Sergi looking to keep it in the zone. That one goes past everyone, and it will not be icing, but further there, working against power. Now McNeil picks it up. McNeil's pass is intercepted by Trinesky in there. Trinesky in there turns there, near side. Now Rasson and Lassen and fires one in. That one's in front of the net. That one is covered up by Watson, but still wide behind the net. Now Bracken looking to get there. Bracken now sending it out. It's going the other way is Arnaz. Arnaz there turned. Now pushes it forward to Bouchette. Bouchette chasing it behind the net. Chick Neal is there. Bouchette gets poked away. Bouchette now trying to turn. He does. He gets pushed down by Lego. Now Trineski there, there as well as Bracken. Now Bracken comes away with it. Brack has it poked away from him. Now Gofredo. Gofredo backhands it over to Ardenaz. RPI gets back on sides. Near the red line, Ardenaz has it. RPI will make a couple of changes. Gofredo. Gofredo looking to send it to Booty. This is going to be icing. Now Booty got turned around there. It hits off the boards and goes back behind the net. 16 2 left to play in the third. Quinnipiac still leading 3-1. Base off will be to the right of Watson. Face off one by the engineers. Arna sends it back behind the net. That one looking to get cleared by Hodson, but it's knocked down. We're going to get a hand pass called here against Jake Martin. And the face off will be in the Quinnipiac defensive zone to the right of Duplacy. So it will be, looks like Booty on the draw, opposite number 17, Travis Trelore. So while my Trelore's Pennington picks it up. Pennington now lofts it into the air. Strom looking to get there, but as is Graf. Graf gets there first, knocks it towards the, the, the boards behind Watson. As Strom is there, as Smolinski loses his stick. Smolinski now hanging out near the crease. 
as Corbett comes away with it. Now Jake Martin, and now the penalty here is this uh, someone's hand is in the air, unsure what the call is. I think it's going to be slashing or interference, rather, is the call. So you know, it's RPI. Someone's stick went flying into the air. There you get Nick Strom. As Quinnipiac will go on the power play. I believe it was for interference for what the official signaled. I know so far as a slash was the hand went up right as a stick went flying, probably, you know, good 15 feet into the air. So face off to the right of Watson for 15 minutes left. RPI needs to be sure on this penalty kill. Cannot be giving one up here as Colin Graff, who is very dangerous on the power play. Graff with it over to Pennington. Pennington over here. Now give it going up right in the net, right for the crease now, and back in the net. It's buried by number 28 of the Bobcat, Sam Lipton. So that did not take much time. 12 seconds into the power play. Quinnipiac capitalizes, and it's now four to one. Bobcats need the engineers. The engineers now trail by three. Game gets a little farther out of reach. They sort of talked about it pregame, but the need to control the Quinnipiac power play, and RPI has done a good job not taking any penalties up until that point. But you can you see what happens when Quinnipiac gets that man advantage. Now Muzadi with it. Muzadi backhands it there, and this is going to be an icing call as Quinnipiac touched up first. So Quid back to the right of Watson, the RPI defensive zone. 14-47 left to play in the third period. On the draw will be Tindling opposite Tupker. One by Tupker. Lee comes out to get it. Watson laid out for it, but only will get there. Now, Gafredo poking it away. Now, we knocking that one back to Tupker. Okay. Uh, not to forward. And his pass hits off the official. Was ready to Tellier. Tellier going towards the goal. We laying out was Gafredo. We knocks it away. Now, Hudson coming in the direction over the red line, over the blue line. But we is there together. He pokes it back to Tellier over the three on. Now, three on to Tellier. Back to Tupker. Tupker fires when that one goes high off the glass. Now it goes far side. Lee is there. He loses his footing. Smolensky comes away with it. Smolensky sends it up. Timling gets a tip on it. That one goes down to the backboards behind Duplacy. Now almost taken away there by Andreas. They do get to it. That's Payant with it now. Payant looking to make a man move. Make a man miss. Now fires away. It's gloved by Duplacy. Or a face off to his right. <laughs> 13.51 left in the third period. Quinnipiac 4, RPI 1. There will be the 17s in the circle. Beaton and Trelaw. One by Trelaw, going back to get it is Martin. He knocks it over to Moore behind the net. Now that one sent the length of the ice, and it's going to be icing against the Bobcats. As Agnew gets to the dot, we'll do it again. This one to the right of Duplacy. Yep. It'll be... 
McNeil, McNeil run the draw opposite Troy. Bracket, Rouchette, Sodi, and Agnew also out there. Fisher waiting a bit, drops the puck. Bracket there. Moore picks it up behind the net. Crashing is certainly to knock away from Lipkin. Now getting tied up here. McNeil losing a stick. Unsure what happened there. Now gets knocked out of his own. Bouchette there to pick it up. He sends it back. Surdy collects. Surdy gets pushed down into the boards here by Graf. Surdy working on Graf here. Graf working towards the net. And Watson covers it up. Now Surdy getting into it here with Graf. Now everyone is getting into it here behind Watson. Ten man scrum ensuing. So the officials try to separate things. Someone's got a handful of Graf's sweater. Oh, I believe that was actually the official. As they peel things away, we'll see if anyone gets sent to the box. I assume there would be someone on each side if they did. Looks like no penalties assessed here. Good to see. So the first one will come out to mutual ice. Uh, the RPI bench side, like the Houston Fieldhouse. The ring here has the Quinnipiac bench on our side, alongside the scorers box and the penalty boxes, and the visiting bench on the far side. This one's won by Quinnipiac, Marcellus. Rossin in with it. Rossin sends us to center ice to Pennington. Pennington dumps it into the far corner, hits off the glass, bounces toward the near corner. And there we go, it's Marcellus. Marcellus is an engineer either side of him. And that one is lifted into the netting by Cerbone. I'll take this moment to remind you that you're listening to Engineer Hockey on 91.5 FM WRPI Troy. First round of a best of three series between the Quinnipiac University Bobcats and the RPI Engineers in the ECAC quarterfinals. Now that one is won by the Engineers, but the clearance pass was intercepted, so it's sent back around the boards. Now there, behind the net now is Quillen. Quillen looking to feed a teammate, but a little... Scrum ensues, and now a puck behind the net. Quillen with it. Quillen. Quillen back towards the point. Sends to the far side of Pennington. Down low to Marcellus. Now with a Pion. Pion intercepts it. Now Marcellus. Now up here trying to clear the zone, which they do. Now, beat in here. Pressuring. This one's dumped in by Quinn Pack because they make a change. Smolensky picks it up. Smolensky now over the blue line. Swanski now sends it in. Now it's his deflection off the stick of Chernesky in there. Now Alex Power going the other direction. Power into the corner. Power behind the net. He turns now. Sends it back to the corner. Hodson's there. Far corner. Power, Strom, Hodson. Now it's poked towards the near side. Now Hodson has it. Doesn't know what to do with it. Plays a dangerous pass across the crease. His power got a stick on it, but wasn't able to corral it. Now into the far corner. Timbling there, pressuring against the goal. It's the near corner. Timbling winning a hit there on McGee. Now sip alone, sending it to Lego. Lego into the far corner. He goes back around the net, sends it in front of the crease, looking for Chernesky in there. Now going there is Hotson. Hotson free and go free, but the Fredo can't settle it. Now Chernesky over the one on the row. Breakaway here for Chernesky there. He goes right, can't get it home. As Watson denies him. Now Booty. Now Hotson there as well. Booty's able to get it loose. Booty's face in front of him. He makes a move. Now pushes it a little far towards his right. Now plays it back towards center. Gofredo. Gofredo wipes out and goes into the boards. Now Booty. Booty turns around. Plants a bracket. Bracket fires a shot. That one hits off the post. Now Trinesky in air. Trinesky sends it to neutralize where Bouchette plays it over to Gofredo. Gofredo collects it off the boards. 
This one goes behind the eye, behind the net. Now Agnew fires a shot in right into the front of Duplacy. Right, now we're going to face off to the left of Duplacy, 1042 in the second period. It will be McNeil for the engineers. And he'll be opposite Zach Kepker. One by Tupker. Okay, looking to keep his own city in. Neil Fires there. Neil Fires shot. That one goes wide. Hits off the glass. And now that one is cleared into the fans by Pennington. Davis Pennington, number four. The junior from Salim, Michigan. Previously played for the University of Nebraska at Omaha. The NCHC. Standing at 5'10", 185. Face off now to the left of Duplacy. It's one by Quinnipiac. Now Quinnipiac, that's Filion. Playing into the corner. Surdy chasing. Now Bouchette looking to play to McNeil. But it finds Bracket instead. Bracket over to McNeil. That hits off his skate. And knocking it back forward is Agnew. Now Bouchette chasing behind the net. It gets it poked away by Pennington. Now back out to Agnew. Agnew sending into the corner of Bouchette. McNeil there as well. Into the corner. McNeil is there. McNeil has a bipennial side of him. And Tellier over the front way with it. He plays it to Tupker. Tupker over the blue line now. Throws it off the board and sending it back towards the quick back to Vincent Zone as an engineer skater. Now Watson with it. Surdy to Muzadi, back to Agnew. Over to Beaton. Beaton gets turned around there, just knocks it into the zone. Muzadi was in the vicinity. Now the way off sides here as it came in and out. Now a long pass with a lip in. That one takes a rear bounce into the corner. Now Graf picked up by Surdy. Surdy looking to clear it, but he finds Trelew skate. Now, action here near the scorer's table. Muzadi there gets pushed aside. Now, long pass looking for Muzadi. The won't go on goal. And this will be icing against the engineers. So, this I think will be our media timeout of the third period. We have 8.45 left to play. No, it is icing. Pardon me. Stoppage where one team is not allowed to change. So, we won't get the media timeout. So it is Quillen the really opposite beaten. Draw to the right of Watson. One by Quinnipiac. Now a shot fired in here. Right in front of the crease. Now Beaton has it. He looks to clear. So it goes back out to the point to Moore, who fires it right back in. Now looking to get it out of Smolinski. Gets its way to Heideman. Smolinski with puck still in the zone. I put unable to clear. Now that one gets sent to the far corner. Quillen there. Quillen backhands it back to Sabone. Sabone has the point to Lee. Lee set it, ready as a shot, and that one takes a deflection off the stick of Smolenski and goes into the netting. And now we'll get the media time out. So, 14 left to play in the third period. And. Quinnipiac for RPI 1 is the score. Take this moment to make a couple of announcements. So I'd like to thank the Red Star Union, which provides funding for all club-related activities at Arnsola River, including this broadcast of RPI hockey, as well as RPI football in the fall and baseball in the spring. RPI is looking for announcers to make live calls of RPI sport events, like this one. As well as for baseball in the spring and football in the coming fall, there are chances to get on the air this upcoming season. So reach out to us at wrpi sports 
by rpi.edu if you are interested. So 8-14 left for play in the third period. RPI trailing by three to Quinnipiac. Teams taking back to the ice. Face off will be to the left of Watson. It's Tinling opposite Quillen, but someone was early. Can we do it again? Second time. And that one is won by Tinling. Smolenski collects. Since he looks to play it, but hits off the skate. Of Quillen. Now Sabone. Over to Quillen. Now looking for Sabone to find the net. His pass is Aaron and it gets to Payant. Payant now feeding into the far corner. Hotson chasing. Hotson laying a big hit there into McGee. Now getting into his Hotson. Now a punch is thrown by McGee. Let's see if there's any disciplinary action here. <laughs> And McGee will go into the box, and as will Hudson. So they play four on four. Officials having a conversation here. Passing in a word, having a word with the fourth official who's standing out near center ice. The captains come over. Then just outside the circle. Officials break and they have their ruling. Or that word fully of what the that ruling is. First coming over to Dave Smith, he have in the word. There's still someone in each bench that is under review. So we'll see what the review is about. It's under review. I, I think this is a Dave Smith challenge, maybe asking for a major penalty to be assessed. But we will stand by and await this review. 7.38 left to play in the third period. Quinnipiac leading four to one. Out of town scores. So the scores were, in fact, not working for in the uh, Colgate game. I last heard that the score was 2 0 Colgate leading. Dartmouth is now up to a 3 to 1 lead over Union. Over in Ithaca. Harvard has clawed back. It's now four to three. And still, I cannot see the score at the moment of the Colgate St. Lawrence game. So we await the results of this challenge. She has a lead, I believe it's a challenge from Dave Smith. So we've got a word. We'll see what the result of the challenge is. I've not heard anything from the announcer. 
Well, when we hear something, whether the challenge was successful or unsuccessful, so unsuccessful since we see two minutes on the board. So this one will be a two minutes roughly against each skewer. Twelve minutes, twelve seconds. Time of the penalty. So we do skate four on four. Now Swanski into the corner. Now Ross an inch. Now over to Trineski and air up to Tupker. Spins here two on one for the Bobcats. Back to Tupker. Tupker doesn't bury it. Not sure what happened there, whether he's shot it wide or didn't shoot it at all. And there's audio as the home to Moore. Now, settling it with Isla Go, who's it for Quillen. Hard time making a change. Quillen knocking it back to Moore. Moore over the blue line. He's got Lee in front of him. He takes it over the blue line, then leaves it back for Lee. Lee's touch takes him over the blue line into the new zone. Quillen back off the touch up. Sending it forward for Moore. Moore chasing it into the corner. He sends it back around to Quillen. Quillen's there. Quillen leaving it for Ripken. Ripken leaving it for Lee. Lee turns. Now Lee staying towards center, sending over to Lipkin. Lipkin now to the slide. He fires one in, takes a deflection, and goes into the netting. So still no word on that review. You don't know if it was a challenge they would announce so, whether it was successful or not. So face off will be to the right now of Watson. Face off to the right, Watson will be Tinley opposite Marcellus. One by Marcellus out to Graf. Graf knocks it over to Legro. Legro fires and that was a reflection. It's buried by Graf. Quinnipiac makes it five to one. Watson looked like he had a glove on it for the for a moment, but he just couldn't come down with it. And Colin Graf picks up the pieces right outside the crease. And buries it. That goal comes at 13.51 in the third. Now it'll be McNeil Marcellus at center ice. Marcellus from the early, we'll do it again. As fans start to head to the exits, thinking this one is comfortably in tow for the Bobcats. Now Graf with the puck. Graf into the neutral zone, over the red line, and now over the blue line. He sends that one down to the corner, goes from far side to near side to Marcellus, near the dot. Marcellus down to Graf. Graf now over the road, the road fires one in, quick wrister. Goes wide, McNeil's there. Now Gafredo. Hudson knocking it to Arnaz. Arnaz looking for Booty, but Hudson gets tied up there as well. Now Booty being held up here, hands stay down. Nope, and now we will get it. And this is going to be holding as Fulion is still holding on to burn the Booty. Well, looks like Fillion will sit two for holding. Well, not Fillion, I take that back. It's number 20, Mason Marcellus. The freshman from Greedy, Greeley, Ontario. Previously played for the Lincoln Stars, the USHL. So face off will be to the right of the place here. 527 left to play in the third. We'll see if the engineers can crawl in back here. Face off is won by B and gets out to Agnew at the point. Over to Heidemann. Heidemann back to Agnew. Agnew fires a shot in. It's gloved up off the ice by Duplacy. And the face off will be to his left. 
Shots on goal now, 35 for the Bobcats, 20 for the Engineers. Even premature on that one. She's opposite Tupper on the draw. One by Beaton. Agnew gets it. Agnew wants to fire a shot that's blocked by Tupper. Now moves out into the slot looking for Payon, but Payon can't settle. Now this one's clear. That one will go into the ice. Agnew will go back to get it. Agnew picks it up from the far corner. Skates behind Watson. Now comes up between the dots with it. Let's make a move here as pressuring was more. He plays it back to Beaton. Being over the blue line now, leaving over Heidemann. Heidemann over the blue line, but his pass is intercepted by Lee. Now Moore with it, 2-1-2 two two here for the Bobcats. Cooper Moore fires a shot in, but it goes right up into the netting. So we got a face-off. Face-off beats the left of Watson. There will be Tim Ling opposite Cherneski in there. One by Tim Ling. That one goes back to Smolensky. Smolensky between the circles. Smolensky leaves it back here for Gafredo. Gafredo over to Tim Ling. Bouchette tips it forward, but McGee's there to collect. Now this one's sent the length of the ice plate off the glass. Smolensky is there. Watson settles it. Smolensky picks it up. Swanski now bring it up, being pressured by Lipkin. He leaves it back for Tinling. Tinling leaves it back for Hudson. Hudson over the blue line now. Plays into the corner. McGee is there. Now Bouchette. Hudson. Hudson looking to play towards center. Takes a deflection. Now Gafrio gets it. Gafrio sends to Swanski. Swanski takes the slap shot. Bouchette got turned around. He wasn't ready for the pass from Hudson. Now Bouchette at the point. Plays over to Hudson. Hudson back to Bouchette. Bouchette now readies over to Smolenski. Now over to Gofredo. Now back to Smolenski. Smolenski plays the slap shot. Sends it to Hudson. Hudson now gets pushed into the boards by Lego. Now working along the boards here. It makes its way out to Smolenski. Smolenski looks to play it to Hudson. But it takes a deflection. And Lego is able to clear the zone. The Smolenski will have to go back to correct. And that is the end of the power play. Now this one's sent to line for the ice by the by RPI. And that will be icing. 318 left to play in the third period. Clear Piak leads the engineers for a five to one. Face off will be to the right of Watson. It will be Quillen opposite McNeil. One by McNeil. Smolenski there to collect. Smolenski behind the net. He gets it taken away there. Dangerous by Lipkin. Now Heidemann. Heidemann with it. He sends it over to Magnew. Sorry, Surdy rather. Surdy sends it forward. Hudson gets a tip on it. RPI makes a change. Now Heidemann. Heidemann working against Cipollone and Martin. Now Pennington. Pennington clears it out of the zone. Quillen takes it back in. Jake Martin now with it over to Pennington. Pennington tipping it forward. Slow it off side sales. Graff will head for the bench, and Arnaz will collect the puck. Sends it over to Surdy. Surdy with it to Arnaz. Poking it forward. Arnaz slaps it forward. Duplacy will set up behind the net. Quillen over to Trelor. Trelor over to McGee. McGee takes the hit there. By the bench from Booty. Now, Payant looking to go the other way, but he can't get control of the puck. Now, Payant tips it forward, beating chasing, but Rossin is there as well. 2.05 left to play in the third period. Watson, no intention of leaving his net, it seems. At this point, now Trelore. Trelore plays it back to McGee, who plays over Rossin on the near side. Rassenden gains the red line and dumps it in. Mata there. Mata looking for Strom. And getting it there is Tellier. Trelore. Now over Logo. Logo is set up for 
Goes to a slap shot opportunity, but he couldn't settle the puck. Now Tellier over to Payong, who gets it. Now McNeil. McNeil dumps into the corner and chases. Bouchette's there as well, as is Lego. Lego gets to it first, sends it back to the near side of the Chernesky in there at the point. Now that one's poked back by McNeil, I believe, and Gofredo goes to get it in front of Watson. Now that one's sent in over the red line, tipped forward by McNeil, and Bouchette chasing into the corner. Now it's Cipollone. One minute remaining. Now settling behind the net is Martin. Martin over to McGee. McGee plays it off the board to Chinesky in there. Chinesky in there over the blue line. Now Pennington at the point. Pennington sends it behind the net. Now, no puck moving now. It comes free as Pennington collects it near the end line. Pennington turns here. Goes up the boards to Chesky at the point. Now it takes a deflection, knocks into the air. So once he settles, 25 seconds remain. Long high pass here. We'll see icing, icing waves off. Gofredo trying to get the edge here on Martin. Now Pennington. Pennington there took the puck, booty in the vicinity. This one sent the length of the ice. No icing as Chernesky there got there first. Five seconds remain. Four. And there is the horns. So FPI drops the first game of the series. Square Piac wins. Score by five to one. The up and down game for the engineers. Start off what kind of flat foot at the beginning of the game as Quinnipiac got an early goal. And they played a lot of the game strong. You know, second half of the first period, middle of the, was it pretty much the whole second period, they played a pretty even footing. And, you know, kind of gets away from them at the end. Where Quinnipiac gets a power play, that's a goal. It's a lead where to five to one, but we'll, Recap all that scoring for you right now. Scoring start off 145 into the game from Anthony Cipollone, even strength goal, assisted by Victor Chernesky in there and Alex Power. Then in the second period, 45 seconds in, Jacob Quillen made it 2 0, assisted by Mason Marcellus and Andon Sorbonne. Then Nick Arnaz gets one back for the engineers. Assisted by Dovar, Tim Lang, and Austin Hyman. That made it 2-1. to one. And then it's all quick period from there. 11-16 in the second. Making it 3-1 to one and on Sorbonne from Mason Marcellus. And then in the third period, there was a power play goal at 4:47 from Sam Lipkin. Assisted by Jacob Quillen and Travis Trelore. And then at 13:51, to seal the deal. Five to make it 5-1, your final score. Colin Graff, and even strength goal from Mason Marcellus and Charles Alexi Legard. For Quinnipiac, Marcellus with a three point game. So Bone and Quinn both with two points each as well. So, you know, like we said, RPI had their moments in this game. They didn't look totally out of it. You know, I don't feel totally desolate for tomorrow night. I feel like this is. You know, a team that can compete. We saw what they did to Clarkson. And you, know, you stay in this game, especially maybe at the start of periods where they had some trouble, they didn't letting up the goal. You know, two goals in the first two minutes of start starting periods. But I think there's a lot to look forward to tomorrow for for the engineers. Trying to force a game three here. But I don't but this did not seem like you were watching a team. That was minus 900 to win this game, Quinnipiac, for sure. I think the engineers certainly were in it for a time. The score, score might be misleading. You know, Quinnipiac got those scrums right in front of them and our plan maybe didn't, you know, finish those chances where you, know, you had the one where the puck was right next to the two to place his spirit and to threat not able to knock it in. And the other side, you have similar situations where Quinnipiac, you know, does get the goal. So, for your offensive and defensive engineers of the game, defensive engineer of the game, I'm going to 
give to Nick Ardenaz. You know, Ardenaz kind of really making an impact for the engineers tonight. You know, he got the one goal for RPI, cleaning up the pieces there with that second attempt. Ardenaz with uh, two shots tonight, one being on goal. For your offensive engineer of the game, I think I'm going to have to give it to Jack Brack. Jack Brackett. Jack Brackett creating a lot of opportunities for the engineers, getting into space at times. Didn't get a goal or a point himself tonight, so he was there creating those opportunities. So we'll be back in action here. Again, at MNC Back Radio tomorrow, same time, 7 p.m., and it will be all that's left for the engineers. Do or die tomorrow. They'll need a win to force the game through to take place on Sunday here at 4 p.m. So, all comes down to tomorrow for the engineers. You've been listening to Engineer Hockey on 